Hi ragazzi, ciao guys, welcome back to another video. How you doing? No, I'm kidding, that's not that kind of Italian guy video. Anyways, welcome back to the channel, Zamo Zamo here, as confirmed by the big sign behind me, just in case both you or me forgot. Welcome back to another video. Every weekend we discuss fashion, we discuss trends, we discuss design, we discuss how bad my taste in clothing is, and overall just have fun. Today we're gonna talk about the trends that have risen in the last few months, the trends that have fallen, and overall, which trends are here to stay, what's the best alternative, and what we can say about the state of fashion. Fashion. Grab your coffee. Today we're gonna go with a little espresso. Let's get into it. Don't forget to follow, like, subscribe. It really helps out a lot. You can just comment Greaser or Jersey Shore underneath, you know, in relation to my roots. That's gonna be very appreciated. Little quick outfit check. Today I'm wearing a restore pair of New Balance 99 version 5s. These were my first pair of New Balance 990s made in US. I actually bought these four years ago. I was wearing them for a while while working a retail job then I start to stop wearing them and I was really happy because I used them for a year as my gym shoe I know I'm posh as fuck but then I was able to restore those and now I can use them of course there is some crease of time but overall fantastic shoe I'm wearing a pair of Carhartt balloon pants I will also talk more about these oversized beauties in this video here top it up with my favorite brand of t-shirt my favorite magazine Sabukaru out of Japan excels a bit baggier that's why I've tucked it like this favorite bracelet on Baltic aqua scarf, of course, you know, you know what time it is, money, that's the fit. So, as promised, we start hard, we're talking about trends, you know, which trends have disappeared, which trends are instead transforming into something new. I would like to start with the first trend, which is bloke core. So the idea is like to inspire yourself from like the typical bloke guy who you see in pubs, who you see at football matches, on aesthetic that's inspired from like Brazil, UK, fans, jerseys. And the idea of it all would be to mix denim shorts, denim shorts with football shirts. Football or soccer, you know, is like the most popular sport in the world. So that grip really had the whole fashion community on social media on a chokehold for, for a big time. I think overall there was a combination of factors, of course. Football is very popular. T-shirts were available for chips. T-shirts were available in so many different colors. And so the idea, you know, of having an hybrid of like a bit of retro vintage nostalgia mixed with, you know, very uh, wide range of colors and styles available. I think that it was a good input. Of course, it, the brand has been done so many times, you know, and uh, hopefully dead or anyways dying. Maybe there's gonna be a little resurgence now with the European Football Championship, but I think that the enthusiasm is gone. Something that I've actually seen resurfacing is the Dirk Bickenberg shoes. I don't know if you guys remember, maybe you're too young, but like, I remember when I was like 11 or something that Dirk Bickenberg shoes, especially this model, which looks like, sh yeah, football shoes, was so popular. And actually this model has been brought back in the fashion community. Bits and parts overall, the idea with all these trends guys is just like to, you know, try it out, see if there's anything you like and keep that in your wardrobe. What's next? I think that we've seen the surge of run club. Running culture, of course, running is cheap. Running is free. There's so many run club also here in Amsterdam. I am part of the problem, of course, a uh, hypocrite. I'm also part of a few run club that I just joined randomly. But in this space, we have seen the rise of the underdog, the rise of the challenger. When I say challengers, I mean brands who are not that established, what are like fighting back. Think about On Running, for example, the Salomon Group, so like Salomon and Arterix, Satisfy Running, Ciele, all these like more local brands which have like a more of a niche aspect to them, who are taking over. Same thing is happening also with tennis. I think that, you know, the reason of a young star like Yannick Sinner really put the brand on the map and there is a lot of brands who are trying to also catered towards the sport, following this commission in between sport and fashion, which has been brought to the forefront by the blog core. There is not a dominance yet. I really hope that the future for all these trends I'm discussing is gonna go towards a multi-trend. That means that in the same time, different things are popular, different subcultures, and there is different things that you can do at the same time without having a mainstream genre. There's brands I like, of course. I'm actually gonna be running in an event that's hosted by uh, Satisfy the coming weekend. It's really nice to have a local brand, a smaller brand that's involving in community. There's also a big trend that I'm seeing. So of course, brands are involved 
into like community marketing. So instead of investing big budget in marketing, you know, they're just gonna invest in little communities. Keep your eye open for this kind of commission in between running and fashion, tennis and fashion. Try adding something up in your also wardrobe. You know, you can wear like a nice performance hat, a nice purse, uh, extreme fun, fast sunnies, for example, in your wardrobe, that's always, always sick. Have fun with shorts, fun with lengths and keep performance in mind, yeah. Another big trend who has died and that was time is Silent Luxury. Silent Luxury was all over everyone's social media with Secession, with the, with the trend, let's say, of like Loro Piana, Brunello and all of the sorts. The overall concept was, you know, of course, to dress like wealthy people do, so in a luxurious but silent way. This brand has finally died. I'm so happy because, again, it really wasn't speaking my language. But I would say, hopefully, that's my hope, maybe I'm biased, it has been replaced by more conscious menswear. And when I say menswear, I mean like, you know, dressing yourself in softly tailored blazers, but wearing a bit of like more of a roomy pair of denims, loafers, and I would say that's like the, you know, menswear era outfit um, of, you know, the golden days of Paul Newman and Harrison Ford, icons of the genre, Steve McQueen. So I think that overall is nice. I think that Silent Luxury was necessary, kind of sign the death of the logo era and now it's time to keep that lesson and explore more into you know the traditional blazers loafers uh, nice shirts you know just have fun with it dress a little bit more uh, formal but in a fun and personal ways i think there's a lot of brands who are doing that personal for example is one of them and otherwise you can go vintage in this trend i would recommend you guys to go check um, vintage ralph lauren vintage armani they used to do beautiful blazers in the 90s just to quote a couple and menswear, menswear boys, I know you're out there. So there's so much, it's not gonna be as popular as Silent Luxury, but I think it's it's a worthy competitor and for sure, guys, go, go check yourself, you know, for a nice blazer and try to have fun with that. So that's overall my take. And let's see how, you know, this trend is gonna evolve in the future. Then we got trend number three, Gorpcore. Gorpcore, techwear, however you wanna call it. Up until a few months ago, last winter, let's say everyone was obsessed with Gore-Tex, with Vibrant Soul, with performance, with Gore-Tex Infinium, wind resistance, with brake resistance. Obsessing overall for the last couple of years. Time has come now to get it a bit specialized and so going to a more of an elevated approach to it. The concept that you know you wanna wear and having your wardrobe something that's durable, something that's meant for the use you're gonna enjoy with it, it's absolutely valid, don't get me wrong. Performance wear has to be considered with a rational mind. Process of waterproofing is incredibly heavy for the environment. Water resistance, waterproofing coating are incredibly rich in chemicals and toxic. So I think that first of all, of course, we are all entitled to one waterproof jacket, but that's it. Those processes are so bad for the environment, are so bad for the future, are so bad for toxic waste. So that's a, that's a first step that we all have to consider. Uh, overall, on a lighter note, this kind of trend brought under the spotlight the need of performance clothing that's tailored nice, that's cropped nice, and has to look good. This opened up to brands like N1, for example, I absolutely love their stuff and I think that, you know, a elevated, more researched, more peculiar gold core or any way technical apparel is making a comeback. I'm incredibly happy for them. Think about brands like Roa, for example. Uh, I did a video here talking about Saleba, for example, which is a beautiful Italian brand. Anyways, it's also time in this case for a big, big trend to transform itself into little niches. And that can be, of course, hiking gear, that can be winter gear for the next year. Keep in mind those good brands from the past, as I said before in this video, evolve yourself with it. Arctic does great running stuff. Salomon does great running stuff. So again, you can incorporate it in other parts of your day while keeping in mind it is great to have a waterproof jacket. And that's fantastic. You need to have one. But also keeping in mind the fact that, you know, those processes have a cost and we should be all more thoughtful in the future. Absolutely. So then let's talk another big major trend who's divided the interweb and this is baggy pants. We've seen the rise of baggy pants in 2010, the trend of like slim fit pants, skinny jeans. Overall the trends has died down and a pendulum shift has brought the attention towards pants like the carpet and pants, parachute pants, balloon pants, etc. I think overall this standard trend of like, okay, this is cool, that's the size that's more popular. Hopefully it's gonna die down. As we said before, there's gonna be a solidification of little niches. You can wear the pants that you like and that's really freeing, that's really beautiful and that's what's cool about it. With the presence of social media and the sharing of different micro trends and, and sub niches, you can really do what you like, you know, you can also wear both. You can wear your regular pants, your boyfriends, your 
whatever. And I found with it and the consolidation of white pants made possible, you know, the, to, for us to see the presence of so many words. So that's very positive. And again, I would recommend you, I would recommend myself to have fun and wear anything today. I'm wearing balloon pants, but I'm having fun with regular. Not wearing leggings yet, but I'm trying to pull them off. So yeah, I will let you know how it goes with that. But overall, this was a four trend baggy pants white pants which was everywhere now has died down and you know what's next i would say pant freedom you can wear what you like and that's fantastic then we have big trend number five we're gonna look at and that's sneakers sneaker culture you know this hype for like what's the hottest sneaker the new release the new collaboration has been spread so widely and has taken the world by storm since 2010 2012 sneaker culture of course have been around for a long time but this craze really took the world and menswear sphere and fashion sphere conquered it absolutely and conquered it there has been a bit of a stalemate and we're not talking about anymore like the shoe of the summer we're talking more about the shoes we're talking about more what you are the options what are like the little brands so I really like this fragmentation of the topic I think that the era of big brands pushing sneakers and you know every Thursday you have a new pair of New Balance and every month you got a pair of Jordan ones is hopefully over I think that what's taking space to it is different ways of understanding shoe wear. One of my personal favorite takes is the newly found appreciation for leather and how leather shoes, leather wear, loafers, moccasins have come back to be appreciated again. I would recommend anyone of course to keep timeless classics and on the other hand keep in mind the fact that there is space for these timeless classics and there's anything for anyone from Dr. Martis on like the cheaper more generalistic side you can elevate it to solo wear you can go from like American version you can go for Japanese version of these timeless classics you can go uh, for example with this beautiful pair of bachelor shoes that I really love you can wear Clarks if you're more into like the sweat you know contrast leather there's so many options you can find like loafers you can find beautiful loafers you can have fun with moccasins we welcome this change and I think that if something has been around for a while that, that that's fantastic so really happy to see that's next the men's first fair the death of the sneaker culture which again is gonna be around for the enthusiasts and I'm happy for them you know so they don't have to compete anymore more with the world to get a pair of pandas but on the other hand it's great to see that classics timeless classics are being appreciated again give it a look so guys coffee is over we're finally at the end of the video it was great to have an overview at all the trends that have been so relevant in the last decade and what's instead kind of replacing them or anyways trends that we're seeing going up to summarize i think that we are noticing a very interesting surfacing of different trends so we're moving from the mono trend to like a multipolar kind of reality in which with social media with different niches with different kind of communication it's possible for everyone to keep their conversation alive of course we don't have to be seduced by the speed you know it's really easy to hop on a new trend every two weeks it's y2k it's grunge pop it's americana it's whatever but my advice would be to keep inspiration be inspired also by these trends you know tailor pieces corp core pieces can be all included in your wardrobe maybe like just a piece per trend be smart take a look again at what's trending you know explore a little bit the background of the stories of the designer get a taste absolutely i'm really happy that there is more freedom there is more multi-trends and like a multiverse <laughs> of trends and then and again we have more space to do what we like to summarize there is not more this push to be trendy anymore at least that's my hope a focus on timeless pieces or anyways keeping the piece from these trends and have it timeless in your wardrobe for a long time that's the best way to go about it i had a blast discussing these trends with you guys i hope you had a good time if you have any questions just leave it uh, down below if you made it this far in the video leave a comment grease ball a jersey shore spaghetti just to have, make fun of my beautiful face and my beautiful Italian heritage. It was a pleasure. I'm gonna go about my day. Hope you do the same. Have a beautiful day. Love you. Bye.